David Robinson was my favorite guy. When I was in high school, I, I tried to pattern a little bit of my game out. He was Dwight Howard before Dwight Howard ever was Dwight Howard. David was 7'2", quick as a guard. It was a nightmare matchup for every center in the league. David Robinson gets overlooked as one of the best centers of all time. You know, so you have to stay on your feet all the time and be a lot on the floor. You can't blink. I guess you could say he's scary, but I, I, I just think he, he's a great, great player. And this guy was dunking so fast and so hard, I couldn't believe it. In a basketball world full of insane athletic transformations, David Robinson stands alone at the top. As a high school junior, he stood at just five foot nine. As a college freshman, he was just six foot eight. But as an NBA superstar, he stood at seven foot one. A transformation that, in an ironic twist of fate, cost him two years of his basketball career career and almost ended his career before it started. How is that possible? How was David Robinson almost too tall for the NBA? So what's up guys, Mike here, and yes, that is correct. Somehow, David Robinson, a former number one pick and current Hall of Famer, really was almost too tall to even play in the NBA. And I've got to just be honest here, you are in for a wild ride, I will say, because before we get to David Robinson's insane transformation from a 5'9 junior to a 7'1 NBA star, I want to let you guys know just how ridiculously good David Robinson was right off the bat here. Because this is not just another giant story where the player is really tall or goes through an insane transformation and then is just not good. So instead, right off the bat here, I want to immediately bring up that David Robinson is not only one of the four players to ever record a quadruple double, not a triple double, a quadruple double in an NBA basketball game, but he is also also one of just two players in NBA history that have led the league in scoring and won the Defensive Player of the Year award in the same season. The only other man to lead the league in scoring and win Defensive Player of the Year in the same season was Michael Jordan. We will get more into that story. It involves a 70 point game from David Robinson, but going even further here, let's talk about an NBA player's prime. Because I would say that while of course every player is different, the seven seasons between the ages of 24 and 30 are really an elite sample size for comparing the primes of NBA legends. To show you what I mean, only 11 players in NBA history have averaged at least 25 points per game and 11 rebounds per game between the ages of 24 and 30. All 11 of the players you see are either in the Hall of Fame or will be, including David Robinson, who already is. The thing is though, digging even deeper into this list, you might notice that David Robinson is third behind just Wilt and Kareem in total win shares during this span of time. He is ahead of much larger names such as Shaq or Charles Barkley or Moses Malone. And what's even more interesting is the fact that if we add in just one more factor, at least three blocks per game, this list of 11 Hall of Famers suddenly shrinks to just two. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and... David Robinson. Pretty impressive, I think we all have to admit. But before we continue guys, I am very excited to say that this video is sponsored by Roman. And if you didn't know, 52% of men actually suffer from ED. Let that sink in for a second. That means more men have an ED problem than don't. However, even though it is so common, I understand a lot of people are private. A lot of people don't want to talk about this kind of thing. But that is why Roman has you covered. Roman is able to connect you directly with a licensed US healthcare professional for a free telehealth consultation right from the privacy of your own home. And then if appropriate, the provider will find the right treatment for you and also prescribe you effective medication for that treatment. Roman is someone you can trust. They provide both effective and FDA approved treatments for ED. On top of all of this, shipping is discreet. There's always two day shipping and ED treatments start at just $2 a dose. And honestly, guys, the whole process is super simple. So if you think that Roman is something that will help you, you can head on over right now to GetRoman.com slash Corzema to complete your free consultation, and there you can find the right treatment for you. And by the way, by using my link, which will be in the description down below, Roman has also hooked us up. They're giving us $15 off your first order. Oh, and by the way, if you do use my link, which is going to be in the description below, and again, it's GetRoman.com slash Corzema, you are going to get $15 off of your first month of ED treatment, which is just a great deal. Roman is hooking us up. 
So again, guys, that is getroman.com slash Corzemba. And for now, let's get back to the video. At this point already, though, you may be wondering, Mike, if he's this good, why is he not brought up more in the list of great centers? Well, I would argue that David Robinson should be talked about a lot more. And I would also like to say that at one point, the sky was the limit for David Robinson. There was a time where David was seen as the modern day version of Bill Russell. And I emphasize modern there. As was it mentioned before, David Robinson spent his entire life up until the age of 16 thinking that he was going to be an average height. And that is it. David did not plan on playing any organized basketball at that point, including high school. He was just excited to become an engineer and actually told Sports Illustrated later in college that he was fine staying at Navy, even if it meant he was not able to play in the NBA until his Navy commitment was over because he was excited to do other things. And if you forgot, well, here is where the too tall title comes into play. Because here is a list of all of the most incredible growth spurts that we have ever seen from an NBA basketball star. And on this list, David Robinson stands alone. You may know some of, if not most of these stories, such as Michael Jordan growing seven inches and becoming the greatest player to ever live, or Anthony Davis growing eight inches and becoming the number one recruit in America after rocking Rex Specs a little too much. Or even as we keep going, we find CJ McCollum had no business playing in the NBA when he was just a five foot two freshman, but after growing 13 inches, he's become a 20 point per game scorer in the NBA at six foot three. What I feel like never ever gets mentioned is that David Robinson not only grew an insane, is insane even the right word here? We need a better one. One of a kind, ridiculous 16 inches from the time he was a junior in high school to when he finally played in the NBA. And somehow, when we look past the paper, when we look past that number of 16 inches, things get even crazier. Because most of these guys had one growth spurt that launched them into the NBA career that they have now. Russell Westbrook grew seven inches and he became an MVP point guard. LeBron James grew eight inches in high school and is now in the GOAT conversation with Michael Jordan. Zion Williamson grew nine inches and disappeared off the face of the earth. All of these players had their growth spurt and that was it. By the way, guys, if you are enjoying this story and you're not already subscribed, I make basketball videos exactly like this. So it would be awesome if you did subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. I really hope you are enjoying this David Robinson story and now back into that story. The reason that David Robinson almost lost lost out on his entire NBA career was that he had both an insane growth spurt in high school and then in college just never stopped growing. It was also somewhat of a problem that as a high school senior, after he had grown from five foot nine to six foot six, he still never had played any form of organized basketball. As David himself remembers, I didn't even notice how fast I was growing. It just seemed that more and more people were looking at me and saying, man, you must play basketball. These people were seemingly all basketball experts as playing basketball was definitely the right move for David Robinson long term. But even as a senior in high school, no one was really recruiting David other than Navy. But that was great for David. He loved the idea of a guaranteed job out of college. And so David Robinson would join the US Naval Academy, where he would, of course, go on to become the greatest player Navy has ever seen. The problem at the time, though, was that even Navy almost did not let David Robinson attend their school, let alone play basketball. The reason being that the height limit for a freshman entering the Naval Academy at the time was six foot six. However, exceptions could be made and 5% of the incoming freshman class could be as tall as six foot eight. David barely squeaked by with that exception as already by the time he stepped foot on a basketball court for Navy as a freshman player, he now stood at around six foot eight to six foot nine. There was still no reason real problem here as David didn't care about the NBA and why would he? He wasn't considered an NBA prospect by a single person on earth, himself, his coach, his dad, everyone included. Again though, somehow David Robinson just never stopped growing. As after an okay freshman year, his coaches were shocked to see that when David Robinson returned to play his sophomore season, he had not only grown another two inches, but had also put on 20 pounds of muscle and now was an unstoppable beast. Robinson's rise to stardom from his freshman to sophomore season was both unexpected and extreme. As a freshman, David Robinson averaged 7.6 points, 4 rebounds, and 1.3 blocks per game, and not a single person related to the NBA 
knew his name. Just one season later, in an era where, remember, college basketball stars normally stayed at least three, if not four seasons, which meant the competition was much tougher. David Robinson, as a sophomore, would average 23.6 points, 11.6 rebounds, and four blocks per game. Four. To really put this into perspective, let's take a look at the guys we have already looked at in terms of growth spurts, and let's see how much they improved from their freshman season in college to their final season in college. Now, of course, guys like Zion and Anthony Davis only played in one year, but that's kind of the point here. They were already established stars. It is very, very clear that out of everyone we have already talked about, David Robinson not only had the craziest physical transformation, but also on the court. Look at this difference. The only player that even comes close to David is Tim Duncan, who coincidentally helped a veteran David Robinson win an NBA championship with the Spurs, but even Tim Duncan is just not close. David Robinson's story is one of one, simple as that. Especially when you consider that even after all of this, after David Robinson did emerge as a star at Navy, after he was considered the consensus number one pick in the draft, there was no guarantee that he was ever going to play in the NBA, or if he did, it would probably be too late to develop into the player he would eventually become. The reason I say this is that David Robinson played at Navy, and while he was the best player that Navy has ever had, he led them to an Elite Eight, their greatest postseason success ever, and also still easily holds the most records out of every player who has ever played at Navy. At the end of the day, the United States Naval Academy is just that, a Naval Academy with a five-year commitment to the Navy after you graduate, no exceptions, nothing. This was and this is the Navy. They don't care about things like you are a basketball superstar. They care about the fact that you made a commitment to the Navy, which meant if the Navy did not want to make an exception for David Robinson, which they could just not have, he would have had to wait an entire five years to play in the NBA, and there is no getting out of that. You can't break a commitment with the Navy that is literally treason. Luckily for NBA fans, in a twist of fate, while David Robinson's late growth spurt almost kept him out of the NBA, his final height is what got him there. Navy did agree to cut their normal five-year commitment down to just two years in part because there is a reason that Navy has a height limit. David Robinson was set to become an unrestricted line officer after he graduated, which meant that he was eligible for command at sea of Navy's war fighting units. That included war fighting units such as submarines and warships. At seven foot one, that just simply was not going to happen. And so the Navy and David Robinson came to a compromise. David Robinson would not miss five years, but he still would miss two years in the NBA as he did make a commitment to the Navy and he was okay with that. David Robinson felt that this was more than fair. As an exchange for this compromise, Robinson would go on to serve two years of active duty with the Civil Engineering Corps. And then after his active duty was up, he would then become a spokesman for Navy recruiting in general, not basketball, and for Navy's anti-drug campaigns. So in the end, everyone was able to get what they wanted here, which is great. And of course, after serving his time for his country, David Robinson did go on to become the superstar that I mentioned in the beginning of this video. He was still picked by the Spurs with the number one overall pick in the draft, knowing that he had a two-year naval commitment because that is just how amazing he was. David Robinson was also instrumental in the Spurs creating the dynasty we know they had with Tim Duncan. And if you want to know that story, just let me know in the comments down below, because at this point, yes, guys, we are at the end of of this video and I just want to say if you're still here thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed again if you are not already subscribed it would be awesome if you could subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video if you're already subscribed thank you so much for supporting you're awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day guys and cue that music if you're still here while the music is cued here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy make sure to click on one of them again I know you're gonna love it and other than that have a great day and peace